I hope you're all doing well today and welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to highlight a tool which is very freaking awesome. I have a little bit of experience with it and I wanted to show you guys and believe it or not we actually got these amazing hackers to sponsor us. So thank you to today's sponsor any.run. Let's dive right into it. I have a question for you. You are a hacker. You get an email containing an attachment. You want to view that attachment, but you don't want to risk your own computer. You have options, right? You can set up your own VM, you can manage Snapshot, you can do blah, 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 blah. But why go through all that trouble when there is already a tool that can do this for you? So if you want to analyze your malware, you can actually go to any.run. And I have done this already. There's a few pieces of malware that I have tried to analyze so far and I'd like to go through them with you guys because I do think they're quite interesting in that regard. So right now I have a Windows 11 task running that contains a sample. I'm not going to continue on that one. I'm just going to go into my history for a moment and I'm going to go to this system right here that we have open. And from here, let, let's just see, let's download that sample yep let's allow it okay yeah we know that it was infected let's upload this again and let's see what we have so we can upload this zip file right here and if we enable the pro mode we can see where we want to start this malware from we can see that this is .exe.zip, so we'll have to unzip it, which means we'll need a little bit of time from the VM. You can set this up up to 660 seconds. And basically, this idea behind this is that this isn't going to be your daily driver, right? Of course not. So you would need like to put a time limit on this. You just need to execute your malware. You need to see what it's actually doing. And to do that, you can just set its duration to however long you want. You can also see if you want to connect it to the internet or not. You can say if you want to have an HTTP man in the middle proxy and if you want to enable fake.net. You can even route through Tor, through a residential proxy or through a user VPN. If you want, you can also change the operating system in which this spawns and we've just done that. All right, so at this point what I've prepared for you is a little bit of a demo of what these different Windows versions can and cannot do. So basically right now what you see me do is I've uploaded an exe file and in this case what I'm using is I'm going to be using Windows 7 initially just to see what this will give. Now let's focus on the HTTP requests and the threats that are detected. Let's also focus on the screen because we can see that the malware right here has crashed. It didn't seem to find an exe that it needed. So what have we done against that? Well, basically in this case, we're going to start a new analysis with the exact same exe file. This time only we're going to start it on Windows 11. So let's see what that brings. We're going to start a new private analysis in this case. And we're going to try to see what threats we have. Now, when it comes to the HTTP requests, you won't see many things fishy, but in the right tree structure, you will see quite a few weird processes that you probably shouldn't be starting, right? So we can investigate them as well. We can click through. We can see what each of these processes does. And once again, the AI module is active there if you want an explanation. We can already see what exe has been started here, something from the temp folder and here it's v, we see that it has started quite a few sub processes, including that elusive installer.exe that it couldn't find on the other system. If we scroll down, we can see as well what this means, what all of these processes do. And we can once again go through and we can see that there aren't a whole lot of HTTP requests going back and forth. But it is definitely a malicious process that has been started. So let's move on. In the time. I'm starting this right up right now. We can see that the zip is open. We have a file right here. The password was infected. So let's type that in. Let's get infected, shall we? So this is the exe.bin file. I'm going to have to guess that we'll have to rename this to just an exe file. Yes, sir, I do. And let's execute. So process has started. 
we can see some requests going in coming out this is really interesting because now we seem to have the isolated malware requests going on now with these malware requests i can choose basically do i want to in this case investigate what's going on do i want to summarize through ai which is a handy feature we all know how important ai is getting these days basically it's saying this url is used to get for the ip address on port 80 the request was made with the process blah 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 located for the user admin legitimate programs may make get requests indeed but we'll investigate what the fuck this is all about Let, let's have a little bit of a look see shall we uh, bup, bup, there we go so you can see quite a few things that are going on right here let's investigate that because this is all really interesting we can see first of all this url so then we see here with the static discovery and this hopefully shows you why static analysis just isn't enough these days the thing is this all seems maybe very easy to identify but i've been able to identify this in what time like maybe a few minutes versus having to do static analysis of course i realize static analysis is important but adding something like this with dynamic analysis where you can completely control what's going on what system is running etc it, it's just wonderful to have you can have dynamic analysis on different operating systems within minutes it's fantastic we can see a post request with some data going back and forth like the message with being plugins browsers etc eventually we do see sqlite being executable being downloaded so that, that's interesting right we have another executable that's actually downloaded this time the file name is being sent as well so we can download that executable and we can actually execute that later on let's give that a shot the password is infected got it thank you very much really appreciate it and we have more executables here now these are likely just valid executables that needs to make a connection back to the mother system to the mother load i will say now you see this 7u blah 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 here this is a post and it gets a binary remember this Th that's interesting uh, remember this it ends with nko if we go down look at this what the heck is this right files freecam.exe interesting even more interesting <laughs> so let's see here we have all the way at the bottom but you know what we should just well we should just search for it anyway so we can see a lot of stuff going on right here a lot of executables being downloaded a lot of files uh, that we see coming back right here so we make a post request once again to there in the main column we can see oh, okay what are we actually doing we're doing some binary so we're uploading a binary to an endpoint we can see the same right here probably stealing stuff if we go into the threads it will also say stealer stealer there we go so interesting very very interesting we can see all of the connections being made we can easily see the dns requests and right here we can see all of the calls going out together with the processes started up so if i look at the processes right here this is really interesting because this is going to start a bunch of microsoft edge processes which are 100% malicious because they have a remote debugging port open which are 99% of the time used to make a reverse shell connection really awesome isn't that so if i want reports from that i can also do that it's it's pretty good those reports they contain a hell of a lot of information and basically if we let's let's have a little bit of a look so the report contains the basic description of what's going on the behaviors that are observed videos and screenshots and then a process tree which is really interesting because you can see here that we have two processes that are actually going on and spawning stuff we have the luma process with the SV svc host.exe starting command.exe starting con host.exe and then we can see right here that we have steel c starting a bunch of microsoft edge processes and then cmd.exe with this document blah blah.exe blah, starting another virus called amade <laughs> starting another virus luma cribbot luma again 
on my day again. So <laughs> isn't it awesome? Oh, I love seeing this so much. You can also have a little bit of process information, so that is super, super useful. And these reports are very, very handy. The safe browsing as well, it's super useful because you can very easily see if something that you want to go to is malicious or not. It, it, it's safe, it's a lot safer. Of course, you also have a simple mode, but we're not about simple on this channel. We're all about making things very, very customizable. It's very nice that you can also use Ubuntu on this, by the way. So if you have any samples that you want to have investigated, I would give it a shot. Now let's talk for a little moment about the pricing. You can see that they have a free pl plan for non-commercial usage. You can see the uh, limitations here on screen. Um, and if we scroll down here, you can see that the enterprise version also has team management. Now I can't show you that at this moment, but I think what I've shown you is already pretty freaking impressive. Being able to analyze your processes like this, getting summaries for it, getting graphs that represent all of these different process trees. Freaking amazing, if you ask me. Now, I did forget to mention that you do need a business email to register. Now, one more thing, and that's the last thing that I'm going to bother you with. There, we can also see that we have tags. So these tags, they might become important later if you want to search for example if we go to loader we can see other public submissions that have these tags basically these are used for later if you want to do a public submission if you want to search in your history you can also go do the same loader so you can see that you have quite a few options with this tool um, there's a lot of malware going around and i hope that i've really been able to show you that static analysis alone just isn't going to cut it. The thing is that dynamic analysis is needed and I am 100% convinced once again that static analysis has a big, big value. Please do not misunderstand me in that regard. But I hope I've been able to show you how quick we can start up several systems and investigate what processes are being started. It's just super cool to see. This is something that I've always wanted to do and now I easily have the option. So thank you once again, any.run. I'm going to put all the links in the description below. Thanks so much. I hope you have a good one. Bye, amazing hackers.